Okay, so this is an important result. Um, so I, I want to actually show you why it's true. So uh, it's listed as one of the properties in the textbook. Um, I want to point out, so this here, what is that? That's actually absolute value. Um, and this, this theorem really tells you why, why scalar multiplication should be called scalar multiplication because it scales the vector, it changes the length, um, changes the magnitude without really affecting the direction with the exception of negative scalars because then you point the opposite direction, right? But still uh, along the same line, okay? Um, so let's see why this works. Now that absolute value is there because magnitude is always a positive quantity and if C happens to be a negative scalar, then the two sides couldn't be equal, right? Um, so we wanna make sure that both sides of the equation are positive. We wanna address the fact that, hey, scalars can also be a negative. Right? So let's, let's see how does this work. All right, well, if we, if we let V equal to, let's say, um, you know what, let me use X, Y, Z, why not? Okay, so then C times V, using our definition, is gonna be C times X, C times Y, C times Z, I'm doing it in three dimensions, but you can also do it in two. Okay, well then, if I wanted to do the magnitude of C times V, by definition, that is CX squared plus CY squared plus CZ squared, okay? And so now properties of exponents, cx all squared is the same thing as c squared x squared. That's c squared y squared. That's c squared z squared. But that c squared is common, right? So we can factor it out just like, you know, over here, you have the four, we pull out the four, which is the two squared. Um, so we have c squared times x squared plus y squared plus z squared, okay? And so that is square root of c squared times the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, All right? Now, think back to calc one. Square root of c squared, we saw that one a few times, right? Square root of c squared, or square root of x squared, if you wanna think of it that way. That is one way of writing the absolute value, right? Because Square root denotes positive square root. Um, if you plug a negative number into there, you square it, that makes it positive. When you take the square root, uh, well, you don't quite get the number back because you've lost the minus sign, right? So that really is same thing as absolute value. And of course, the other part by definition is just the magnitude of V, right? So it's, it's a useful result. This, really, this result really helps us understand exactly what's going on uh, when we're doing a scalar multiplication. All right, so we're almost done with this section. One subject left to address, which is the subject of unit vectors. We'll get to that next.